Call the meeting to order. Um, I need an invocation. Representative Marcel, would you give us the invocation? Yes. Please. Yes, ma'am. Yes, by his. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, a day that we've not seen and we rejoice and be glad in it. Now, God, as we go about the business of the Council of Nations, we ask that you lead, direct us, and guide us, God, so that we would better serve the senior citizens of this parish. Lord, we thank you for the food that is prepared before us. Let it be a blessing to our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. We pray for the entire staff and leadership at the Council of Nations. Amen. 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 Okay, let's the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, where are Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Go this way. <laughs> it's usually a button. Yeah. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dr. Cole, could you get a roll call, please? Attorney Jennifer Mozan. Present. Miss Jerry Booker. Here. Dr. Derek Cole is here. Miss Patricia Williams. Present. Councilwoman Shauna Banks. Yes. Attorney Steve Schillis. Here. Representative T. Denise Marcel. Here. Miss Jesse Jessica Griffin. Miss Griffin. She's not present. She's absent. Reverend Leo Cyrus. Present. Father Andrews. Attorney Dorothy Jackson. Here. Miss Pamela Ann Mitchell. Here. Ja Mr. Jamie Robinson. Here. Chief Carl Dunn. He's absent. Miss Dorothy Thibodeau. Here. You have a form. Okay. I'll open it up. Chair. Yes. I'm for the record, if I might, uh, our board member Carl Dunn was injured and so he's on medical leave. That's why I saw it. today might be his last day in his cast, hopefully. And our uh, board member, Jessica Griffin, is still in uh, rehab from her injury. So. Injury? Yes. Okay. We'll keep them both in our parish. Yes. Um, I'll open it up for public comment. There being none, we'll move on. Action items. Um, do I hear a motion to certify the minutes of the last board meeting of February 14th, 2019? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Finance report. Ms. Pratt. First item on the uh, finance report would be the amendment of the state budget, and that's our operating budget, the general budget for fiscal year FY19. And the only amendment I'm making uh, is um, the amount of money that we receive from the state. It increased by 67,119 because at the time when we did this, we only had our schedule of funding. Then when the actual contracts came in, there was a little increase on some of them. So that, okay. I said the amount that we're amending is 67,119 because when we got uh, the actual contracts in from the state, they were a little higher than what we had projected from our schedule of funding. Uh, so I took that 67,119 and we decided that we were going to do 10,000 in travel um, because we've, we've hired quite a few homemakers and they use their personal vehicles and we reimburse travel there. We're doing advertising because we are doing more advertising. Um, and then we uh, have $2,005 for operating supplies. CAAA, we got um, an amendment to our 3D contract with the state for $6,014 to do more matter balance classes and classes of that nature. So 5514, we amended that to bring it to the full contract amount of 17514. And then accounting services, another $5,000. Special events, um, we had uh, one special event we didn't plan for, even though our numbers have increased, but we had a Medicare uh, um, program, Medicare awareness program, where we had all the seniors in the parish to come here, and we provided, uh, had the state 
uh, insurance department come and explain uh, the changes in Medicare to them. So that I put 5000 there to help cover that cost. Special events, we always can use more money there because, as I said, our numbers at every site has increased. So what we budgeted, we have four more seniors than we were anticipating. So I put twenty five there. So that takes care of the 67119 uh, And I'd like to offer this as an amendment to our state budget. And this amendment has to be submitted by the end of this month, which is Tuesday of next week. We need a motion to um, amend this the to budget. Uh -huh, to amend the budget. Do I hear a motion to amend this budget? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay. Next in your report, there's a, a balance sheet, and I'd like to provide that to you as a, a standard financial report. Uh, if you look at that, uh, I guess of interest, you will see that our Whitney money market account is at $7.2 million at the end of March because at the beginning of the year, the state sent us all of the tax, not the state, the city sent us all of the money, tax money that they had collected for last year, and that was a little over, almost a little over $8 million close to nine million. But at the end of March, we still had 7.2 million in the money market account on that. Um, that reserve account is still there, 900,000, and then that's the interest that we've earned on that. Um, I don't think there are um, any other major changes on that. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. But this is what we own and what we owe. Councilwoman Shani. Banks, you had a question? Uh, I, I, I probably never started up all the floor trust. Our previous, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. When we came to uh, Council on Aging in 2011, this was the account and this was the balance and the bank told us whatever you do, don't touch it. But that was the account that when the previous, not prior to Mr. Dykes, Sharon LaFleur was the director, there was there was a trust from her brother that, that was, was given to the council that was supposed to be used for operations, and that's the balance that was left in that trust. And it was at that balance when we got here, so we just carried every month. You know, she told us not to mess with it, and we haven't. Did they say Yeah, there was some, some, some question. The bank was still investigating something on how it was spent. Okay. Okay? So. And just to be clear, the seven point two nine five million that is for things that are about to happen yeah, over the, the next whole year. year. Yes, that is not year. in excess. That is in anticipation of things we're doing next year. Yeah. Well, this, this year. This year. This, this coming. Year. Right. Okay. But it's for the year. Just want to make sure. Okay. <laughs> it's not surplus. No. Right. No. Well, actually, we we don't have those surplus. Right. Um, and that's that's basically it. We our total. Um, Okay, that's my balance sheet. The next one is my profit and loss by class. And on this one, the difference is, is this is our actual expenses and, and revenue that we collect, that we've done so since, and this is for last fiscal year. Fiscal year is from July 1 to June 30th of this year. So, and then it's a crossover because the city is on calendar year. So it's half of the city one year, half the next year, and then the fiscal year for uh, the state funds. Uh, and you see that our total revenue is ten million nine seventy six five zero one seventy five, um, and there's no uh, unexpected um, uh, revenue there. Most of that revenue you see up top, though, is from um, stuff that we got for um, for the um, expo. Mine went blank for the expo. You know, so a lot of the funds collectively for the expo. Any other activities that we have where we get sponsorship, that would be there. Uh, and you see the 9.3 that we have in millage funds. And state at this point is 1.3. All right, and then you have ex expenses for the year. And our total expenditures at this point, at the end of March, is 8,308,222. Leaving us with a, with a surplus at this point, operating surplus of 2.668278.89. And if you look at your budget versus actual, it's basically the same information that's on your profit and loss. You have your uh, income and revenue and your expenses. And uh, it is that report that, like I said, basically the same information, it's that report that we'll have a resolution that we'll need to send to um, um, to the state. And at this time, yeah. Board resolution to adopt this instrument acceptance of the third quarter budget versus actual financial report on the 22nd day of April 2019 at a meeting of the Board of Directors of the East Baton Rouge Parish Council on Aging Incorporated, a corporation held in the city of Baton Rouge, state of Louisiana, with a 
form of the director's present, the following business was conducted. It was duly moved and seconded that the following resolution be adopted. Be it resolved that the board of directors of the above named corporation does hereby acknowledge and accept the third quarter budget versus actual report containing the actual expenditures totaling $8,308,223 and the actual revenues totaling ten. Million nine hundred seventy-six thousand five hundred two dollars as of three thirty-one two thousand nineteen. The above resolution was passed by a majority of those present and voting in accordance with the bylaws and articles of incorporation. I certify that the above and foregoing constitutes a true and correct copy of a part of the minutes of the meeting of the board of directors held on the twenty-second day of April two thousand nineteen. Do I hear a motion to accept the third quarter budget versus actual financial report? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. And the last thing I want to mention, it, it says um, quarterly report for the city. Um, <clears throat> I'd just like to bring to your attention that comparing first quarter of 18 to first quarter of, 2000, of 2019. Which page is it on? It's, it's not there. It's just information. Oh, okay. So when we get the report final, we'll, we'll give okay. it to you probably in you know, next meeting or okay. email it to you or whatever. Okay. But it's not, yes, yeah, these are just some some um, comparisons of the services that we've done for that quarter. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that I'd like to share with you guys. The uh, congregate meals served in 18 was 23,570. 19, it went up to 40,115. Home delivered 72,016, went up to 99,177. We're talking about just the first quarter of each year, okay? Homemaker respite services, well, the hours, and we charge one, you know, one, one unit per hour. 23,001 for 18 and 3162 for 19. And I did mention to you that we have uh, hired more homemakers. That means that our waiting list, uh, now I think we're down to like 12 people on the waiting list when, you know, for homemaker services. So we almost eliminate that waiting list like we did with the Meals on Wheels. Uh, informational information and assistance that's actually getting on the phone checking on our clients seeing uh, if they need anything and just you know every monthly we do this we have to do it every year excuse me oh this not you uh, maybe I have okay um, you want me to pass me now okay information and assistance 3674 <laughs> 2009, it was 12,183. As we said, our, our clients, uh, number of clients that we serve have been increased uh, tremendously. And then material aid, you know, that's, that's where we get the, the items that the, uh, our clients need, was, went from 3,018 to 4,720. Let me, let, me, um, let me get that for you, uh, and I'll pass a copy to you. But that was just for information only. Um, Question, what's, what's the percentage uh, that has gone up in service? Well, for congregate meals and, and um, well, Meals on Wheels is over 70% increase. 70% in increase? In Meals on Wheels, because I think we started. I was listening to the numbers and I kind of thought it was Oh, yes. All of them are really high because, you know, last year we didn't roll out our Meals on Wheels until uh, February. We didn't do it in January because we hadn't gotten the city money yet. And so that's we are, to date. Huh? Is that, and that's just for this quarter? First right? quarter. Correct. First quarter, yes. So we can expect an additional increase as we go through as we, the next yes. quarter, right? Right, because we don't we do not do waiting lists. So as a as a client needs services, we put right. them on the list. We so. just add them. We add. Okay. I just want to make sure that I was clear yeah. on that. Yeah. And I, I, I want to congratulate you guys on eliminating the waiting list and down to 12 people. I didn't think I'd ever live this <laughs> And uh, we've been getting calls and uh, uh, praises to you guys. Thank All you. Is, you know, the, the, the phone is steady ringing, so we need some more reception. About <laughs> so the problem is the, the phone, the system. the system will only take eight lines. And so the seniors, they block the, they lock the phones up all day. We can't even make calls out. We have to use our cell phones at the desk. Um, and so the uh, wiring cannot take any more lines. So we won't get any until more we get until we move. Field. Right. Okay. That's the only thing that the only drop I know. That I see to it that people they can't call. They have to keep calling. But other than that, I've had nothing but good reports. Thank you. On, on the services that we are rolling out. Mm -hmm. I just want to tell the staff thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. This goes on. Okay. Oh, perfect. Okay. okay, so no action item needed on that. No. Okay. Um, board chair report. Okay, we're going to talk about 1701 Murphy. Street. We'll let Murphy discuss that. Murphy, you want me to start? Or, or? You can go ahead and start. I'll fill in. Okay. Um, 
1701 Main Street is, as you all know, it's a, we call it at the office the Super Size Senior Center. It's the senior center that we've been working on for seven years with the city and the Office of Community Development. Um, it's being done with um, old Gustav Ike federal funds, um, which they had a commitment of $3.1 million. We um, have Coleman Partners did the redesign work on the building for the renovation. We have estimated that the contractor will need about 2.15 um, to get the, the, the building complete. Well, we went to bid the contract um, and it was a little more than they estimated. And the city doesn't have the funds, basically. And so they've asked us to help with kicking in some money um, to complete the building. In uh, the amount of $580,000 is where the shortfall is. It's $100,000 um, for alternate one, which is uh, alternate one is the making the building senior friendly, uh, the automatic doors for the wheelchairs, uh, handicapped ADA bathrooms, grab bars, handicapped toilets, uh, um, non-slip flooring, that came to about $100,000. Um, and then there's $181,000 for kitchen equipment that they wanted us, they want us to buy. Uh, equipment that we're gonna put in the building uh, that will of course make the building more valuable to them that we may or may not be able to take out, but we're gonna buy this uh, uh, equipment at $181,000. So why is it we may or may not be able to take it out? If, if we leave the building and that's our equipment. Because when you improve some, well, Why wouldn't we include that in the contract that we take our equipment? Well, Murphy's gonna, he's gonna address that. I'm just giving you the backstory. Oh, and then the lowest bidder um, for the contract, uh, was short by, which is blunt construction, was short by $281,000, something like that. So in totality, it's $580,000 that the city is short. Um, and I think I have it for you in your, in your construction folder. And you'll see the bid, you'll see where everybody bid it. And if you go to um, the back document, if you go all the way down to the bottom, of the last page, you'll see the uh, the alternates. You'll also see the uh, food service grade. Well, the, uh, the architect thought that the food service stuff would be about, or the kitchen equipment would be about $500,000. But in actuality, the bid came in at 181. You see it? Um, and then he put 66,300 and ten dollars for improvements for like i mentioned the door swinging open and, and handicapped restrooms and that kind of stuff and it came up to um it really came up to a uh, hundred thousand dollars so the city has at they reached out to me and asked me could we commit because if not it'll set the project back if we have to rebid the whole project to find a cheaper contractor, it'll set the project back six to nine months, which means, in essence, OCD will take their money back because we, at the end of this timeline, you know, we only have five years to get this building done and we're in year seven. OCD will end up taking their money back and we have to return this money to the feds. Even the one point, they've already spent 1.1 getting it ready and um, gutted and abated and the drawing and the schematics and all of that. So 1.1 is spent. So all of that will have to be returned, right? So they asked us to come in and partner with them. They sent us a C an amendment to the CEA. If you remember the CEA that we signed, says, okay, once we take ownership of the building, we're gonna pay $3,500 a month for 25 years, and they're gonna take that money and give it to another nonprofit, right? So then they sent a amendment to the CEA that we're just gonna give them this money, and they're gonna go on about their merry way. And then, so I gave this <laughs> the, amended, the amendment to Murphy, who of course has some angst with that amendment. And, he, and here's where we are. We go to council this week, Thursday. Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm sorry. Wednesday. Wednesday. This has to so, be, uh, done and approved by the, It's on the agenda. If y'all don't approve it the contractor up. on Wednesday, right. the feds are coming back to snatch their money. <laughs> so I'll let Murphy so, take it from here. So let, 
let me see if I, I got this correct. Right. The amendment that you saying he has the language with is the IQ two. Uh, clearly, clearly, he puts us under the gun in terms of timeline, right? Is that right? If right. Because we, we, we need to do this in order to move forward. But the, I guess it, the, the bigger question is, so the $3,500 a month uh, that we were supposed to be paying, is that going away? Correct. Is that going to go away? We're going to let Murphy talk. Okay, well, let me let him talk. <laughs> and I'll come back with my questions. Right. Go ahead, because I'm, I'm confused on that part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I appreciate it, if it's a kind of a use it or use it, situ use it or lose it situation, if we don't have something knocked okay. out, revised, they can't hear you, Murphy. Talk a little louder. If we don't have something revised and approved by the council this Wednesday, um, it's likely not going to happen. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> they're asking us for five hundred and eighty thousand dollars plus thirty five hundred dollars a month forever and they said you may you may not get your equipment back if you leave if we, if we terminate the lease if we think it needs to be terminated I'm not satisfied as to the uh, the way the language exists in the contract and the CEA right now uh, Tasha and I both believe that we ought to have uh, ownership interest in this facility which we do not have as it presently exists um, and so there's a couple options to go there we we can, we can talk about specific ownership interest or we talk about uh, the option to buy at a particular time or buy it now. Um, but $3,500 a month for 25 years and that's starting off putting up $580,000 just doesn't seem to fit. I have a meeting tomorrow afternoon mm -hmm. uh, with the mayor's uh, assistant COA. Uh, and uh, with the specific purpose of trying to iron this out. And so hopefully by 2.30 tomorrow afternoon, he and I will have uh, been through this, ironed it out. And so this is an, this is an action item in that it, it asks for uh, authority from this board uh, to allow Tasha and I to attempt to negotiate an acceptable amendment to amendment number two to the CEA dealing with the Main Street property. Okay, okay so, so you're asking us to vote on giving you authority. That's correct. Not asking us to vote on giving you money. <clears throat> I'm not asking for any money right now. I'm asking for the authority to negotiate a deal with the city parish in advance of the council meeting that is set for Wednesday afternoon. Uh, what I don't like is we're dumping all this money and have no ownership. Just like you. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's a chance that when we come away with nothing, and, and it doesn't happen. But the mayor wants it done, as I appreciate it. The council's in favor of it. It's just a matter of getting them and us together. And, and let me let me add to that. Uh, so. Let's be clear in the negotiations that we don't have to pay the $1.3 million back. They no, not us. Correct. No, I know, I got it. Right. Yeah. So for them, it's $1.3 million, whatever they have put into the building that they have to pay back. So I think that there's some, there should be, that should be some opportunity for us to negotiate ownership and certainly equipment. Because you put in that type of money into a building that you don't, which was, and, and initially when we started down this road, the council on aging wasn't supposed to even be paying any rent. Right. Uh, because it was something that I worked out with Mr. William Daniels, who's now gone. Right. And so the, the, everything has changed since the initial concept uh, of getting us in the building. It was primarily to move us from the dilapidated building, the city owned the property, and us to go in it. Mm -hmm. And of course that was prior to us receiving any tax. So once the tax was passed and they wanted more more skin in the game. I'm not I'm not objecting to more skin in the game, but what I am objecting to is spending this type of money and us not having any ownership in that building or the equipment definitely the equipment. Should if we buy it, it ought to be our equipment. And so if we if they want to put us out of the building, fine, you take your building, we take our equipment and we'll find another building. Or again, what would the cost be for us purchasing the building? Because I think 
that may be that might be our best route out because we need to really own our own facility with all the stuff that we're doing to it because they could you know come back and you know it could be under another administration and when the administration changed things changed I right saw that happen because as i said <clears throat> started this conversation with kip it was zero to kip holder right that we were going to pay so now it's gone to 3500 and now they were supposed to pay for the kitchen equipment and now we have to pay for the kitchen equipment. And so a lot of things have changed. Mm -hmm. And so for me, as a board member, I, I don't want to, um, I do not want us to pay 500, I'm going to record the saying, $580,000 for improvements to a building that we don't have A, ownership in, and B, that we uh, put an equipment in that we can't get out. So I think they, we need to start the conversation right there. For me, and I can't speak for anybody else. I second that. I couldn't vote for 508 grand to build a building. Just because we have it. Councilwoman uh, Banks, you had a question? I'm just trying to figure out how got to Because. <laughs> no, uh, they didn't. They are. Uh, they, they didn't hold a gun to our head. The, the problem is they're short, right? And we've been doing this for, for seven years. And we- They're short of funding. The right. city is. But that's because they had to give something right. back. They had to give it back, right. And so the whole 580, would you give 580? Really, the request really didn't come from the city. It came from um, OCD, right, from uh, Ms. Borlon herself, asking us could we assist in the project, because they've been working on the project as long as we have, and they don't want to see it lost. And the fact that we have not, the plan has always been for the, the seniors are moving into that building, we're moving two blocks from them. We have not, we did not plan in our new building um, for seniors to be in that building. So in 18 months, we move. And we have to make a plan, a, a contingency plan for the 400 seniors that I have down the street, right, every day. Um, and so, which I'm trying to figure out what's the most cost effective way of doing that. Because if I have to put them in the building that I'm going in, and that's another floor, and that's another a couple million dollars. So we just need to figure out the best, what's best for us financially, and what's what's going to get us in the timeline that we're in, that we're in what concessions can the city make to alleviate any loss you have to help in now, what I can say is I have spoken to the mayor, um, and, and, and Murphy has spoken to the mayor as well, and she's amenable to selling the building to, to us um, because what she does not want is the same thing I don't want is for the project to die, and she doesn't want to have to give any money back because that's not going to be... Why is she amenable to donate? That's a good question, and maybe that's something that Murphy can have in this conversation tomorrow. And all, most of the other builders that we have, they have a hundred year lease. I'm, well, they only use a frock, I guess, of, use for, of the uh -huh. fire stations and right. other things. Well, you, well, you know they're not doing that anymore. You got you have to put some skin in the game. All of the city builders well, now. The skin in the game is that you're, re, you're, you're redoing it, mm -hmm. maintaining it in short. So right. That's the skin in the game. Right. And it's blighted property, and we're mm -hmm. trying to get rid of blighted property. Right. So you are. That's the skin of the game. Sure, I and agree. That that would be my position. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm asking how long y'all been doing this. Seven years. I mean, since <laughs> the change. Um, that we're here. Who came up with? A, a week ago. Last week, they well, just started emailing us. Yeah, I mean, it had to be two weeks ago because they had ago. to put it as an ad they they did an introduction an agenda item so, last week for this week. So mm -hmm. who um, so it's in the work? No, so it's actually the vote is Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It was, it was up for it, it was so introduced it Wednesday before last. Yes, introduced Wednesday before last. Started emailing. Wow. Yeah. No, um, Eric Decody, DPW, and Bubba Cascio. And then it and then Rowdy, Rowdy got to be a part of that, and uh huh. And then um, I spoke to the mayor one late one evening, and then Gissel and the new CAO. What is the ideal ideal solution on um, this Because that's what, what ideal do you want to have? Uh, the ideal solution is whatever money that we agreed to, to put into it, whether it's a five hundred and eighty or 
whatever that number is, we take ownership of the building. The city doesn't need it. The city's already got some money for it already. Right. Um, right. And if if we if we don't do this deal, the city's got to come up with a right. million plus dollars to pay back right. for the improvements that are made. So it so seems have to. you all? I think that's. I mean, I think that's. Um, that's what you should do. Yep. But have you all talk to each councilman and say this is the deal. This is what we'd like to happen. Not yet. This has been so quickly this turning around. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Go in there and get, and get two votes forward and six against. So I, I think let me say this. I think I think that conversation needs to be driven by the mayor. That one, the city has to pay the. Pardon me. I'm really well. Somebody from her office. I'm saying, uh, speaking to her view in terms of, do we want to pay back 1.3 million dollars? I think that has to be the driving force of this conversation because we could take our ball and go play somewhere and go play else. Someplace. I, I think you, you, you. I think the skin should be. We are like you making a proposal. We are. We are going to be putting 580, and at the end of that time, we're going to put. I wouldn't even bring up, make it seem there's any negativity, any controversy. Sure. It's like, I'm helping y'all. Right. We're so glad to do it. <laughs> and just sign it over to us. <laughs> I know you paid for $580. That's right. Yeah. Well, I, and none of us going to be here to see. That's right. That's right. And it's not like they could use that money on something else. It's either for this or they take it back. And then also add how many city buildings you've already put money in. Sure. Y'all better not come get that stuff, y'all. <laughs> that we put over at your building, huh? That does matter. Right. Now, it does. You're making an investment. So it's, nobody's giving you anything. Sure. You know, this is what you're doing to assist in us eliminating money. Right. What's the preventative from shutting us down, taking the building over, and taking our equipment, and giving it to the firefighters? How would you think of that? Six years from now, four years from now, two years from now. No. Nothing, nothing in writing legally, and that, and that is certainly my concern. But I, I don't think that, again, administration change, council people change. You know, it, it might go like the school board did. It went went from so many members, and it, the the, it, the council could decrease mm -hmm. in in numbers. So my again and, and i don't think it's a negativity to bring to the light of the council members mm -hmm. that they have to pay 1.3 million dollars back that's a fact i guess yeah. and, and and so, no idea. Pardon me, and, and they may not I, I, I do want to know but i just said i was just saying let that be the backdrop versus right you know be, well i would be like i'm helping y'all and, 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 and let me say this from from our previous uh encounters with the council mm -hmm. I'm just saying that I think that you've got to go to them with the facts that either we got to do this. We're trying to, I agree that we're trying to do something to help you guys with the blight property and all that. And actually, we can go back to the beginning. Initially, we weren't supposed to pay any money. Well, we, we're putting skin in the game, correct. But at the end of the day, if we can't work this agreement out where both of us take it's a compromise, well then, you all still have to understand that $1.3 million is going to have to be paid back by y'all, not us. And that has, that conversation, I think, should be on the front end with all of the council members and just tell them we are where we are and we're willing to help to get us out of this situation. We don't want y'all to have to pay back $1.3 million. And, and we want to put, right, and, and well, well, mm -hmm. I wasn't going to say they put us in it, but I mean, they put us in it. The, and, and, and the point, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is short of that, what leverage do we have? What leverage do we have in, in, to ensure that we get the bills? And short of that, what do we have? Besides, they gave us an agreement. And if the mayor is amenable to us working on some type of agreement, I'm sure. Pardon me. You need to write a letter. Not only does she need to write a letter, that whoever's uh, doing her corporate endeavor agreement. Bob Abbott. From Bob Abbott. Mm -hmm. She needs to instruct Bob Abbott in the, right. in the parish attorney's office of what she wants That's in the right. agreement. That's she right. is the mayor. Right. You, you know, and Bob Abbott does work along with the mayor and the council members, right? Yes, ma'am. And that needs to be directed to him. 
Okay. Because somebody has to approve. You can't. He just can't make up a corporate endeavor agreement on his own, just like Murphy can't make up one for us on his own. A board or somebody has to instruct and approve or disapprove of what's in the corporate endeavor agreement. Right. We could start right there by her having that discussion with the parish attorney's office, what we are willing to do in a corporate endeavor agreement. I mean, that's what we used to do when I was there. I don't know. Maybe it changed. So had you written up your ideal situation? <laughs> I'm just saying. So I, so I would go there with my written up. I would love for you all to send it to me so I can call them up and say this is what we're doing. And uh, Bob and everything, and it's a great thing to do it. Okay. But I wouldn't even give a whole lot of it. So she go there. I know you make $150,000 a day. Oh, Murphy. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Can you look about five hundred thousand dollars or so? Would, would that? Where would that money come from? Would that hurt us? No. Miss Pratt. No. We had budgeted a bit, given special yeah, equipment and stuff that we needed. Is it for FF&E costs on that building? Which was, right. I think, was it 600 and something? 728,000. So yeah, because it's, it's, it's FF&E, furniture, fixture, and equipment, mm -hmm. we have to buy that ourselves. So we have budgeted for this building, and that means it's a new building, everything going in the building is new. I have to, we have to buy new furniture and new things for the center. Um, uh, there ha there's a fitness room in there with fitness equipment. We have to buy that. So we already have a budget outside of the $580,000 that's going into the building. Um, so according to the CFO, it's not going to hurt us. But you know, she tight on a dime. Um, she made the accounting department last week find a dime in the budget. Uh, so we, she, she doesn't want to give it to me either. But we'll. Uh, Tasha, that money though, we, we spend the money to buy us equipment. Is it our equipment? That's what we're trying to get. The money that for the FF&E, yes. Yes. Right. That's ours. Right. Because we okay. putting it in there, we What's taking it out. Equipment's ours. Now, you talking about uh, this alternate equipment, this kitchen equipment. Yes. Uh, that's what Murphy's going that's to get. That's different. That's not ours. Things permanently right affixed right to. The issue is, the issue is in the CEA, there's a caveat about things permanently affixed to the building. Right. So Murphy's going to go in there and do what you all, what you lawyers do and get all of that straight. <laughs> <laughs> So that he'll know if we buy an oven and we decide we don't want to play with this in here anymore, we come in there and take our oven with us, right? Right. And then one final question. Is there, has there been an appraisal on the building as it sits? Because that's... The, if, what is the appraised value of it? We don't, we don't want to pay some exorbitant amount of money for a building that's not working. I remember they came back with that exorbitant sure. appraisal on the fire station that's blighted. Sure. We need to, we need to keep that into there in is, perspective on the value of the building as it sits. There is an appraisal, but they do their own. So you get what you get. Now, did we pay for an appraisal ourselves? No. But they have what, a. Do you recall what the appraised value of the building was approximately? I don't recall. I don't recall the appraised value. I'd like value. to know what that number is. I can get that to you. Uh, because we could, we could actually start there. I okay. Think. Sure. I mean, we the city is. The city says that they cannot give away property, right? And so that's why we had to go sure. through that process. Housing. Pardon me? They came for housing. Yeah, that's what the, the ordinance says. Well, they came for the they adjudicated property for the purpose of housing. Yeah. And, and, it, and it goes through the RDA. <coughs> it doesn't have to go through the RDA. It precedes the RDA. Oh. No, I meant mm -hmm. the process that we've been going through to get these other buildings. They, they yeah, I, right. I, I made sure that that other property went through the RDA in order to clean the title and all of that stuff, right? Right. And so that's the that was the process that we used. But the question becomes, what is the value of the property? And maybe we need to start the conversation there and say, look, we just, since there's so much, there's a lot of concern from board members mm -hmm. about the amount of money that we're going to put into this building. Mm -hmm. So what is the appraised value? Value, and then we'll just buy it and then we'll be from up under the council's thumb of asking us a million questions and think that they're, you know, they were, we're required to do so much for them because we have this building, stuff that other uh, people are not required to do. 
I concur. I like owning my own stuff, so you can't come in my house and tell me what to do. Yes, ma'am. I think. <laughs> I have a question for you, so far. But as it relates to Clear's title, the, you know, suppose the RDA. Do y'all know anybody who ever got a clear title through RDA? We did. We did. We did. We did. We did. We did. Y'all waited on the station on it and title the and all that. Right, but we had we had we had to pay for it ourselves. Right. It, the clearing the title cost us more than the building did. Yeah. But we want our attorney wanted to make sure that we didn't have any any issues. So we spent about thirty thousand dollars clearing the title on the ten thousand dollar building. But yeah, we did. And well, that's because y'all did it. Because I would say. But most so people don't. Right. <laughs> when you spend that type of money, you got to get a clear title. Yeah. When you're going to put that much in it, that's, right. yeah. that was the purpose of going through the RDA, to be happy, you know, just through that process. But yeah, we got to clear I think you got to have start with the value of that property. Right. Okay. Madam Chair. Anything else? On the CEA? No. Okay. Do you need them to do a, a vote? Yeah, we need to, we need to have a motion to... Uh, to authorize Tasha and I to negotiate. I, I, I make a motion uh, to authorize the attorney and uh, Mr. Tasha Clark Amar to, to begin the negotiations immediately regarding the building at 701. Second. As discussed, then. Eh? As discussed. All those as, as you all discussed. As discussed with, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that they're going to take into account of what everybody said. But sure. Man. <laughs> all, those in, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so you have the authority now to. Well, well, we have to make a decision. Yeah, we have to make a decision for when this. We will make sure that we we send you out an email and a text message. And if update. anyone's available on Wednesday at four o'clock, I will be there at the Metro Council meeting. If you'd like to join me and Tasha and, <laughs> and Murphy, so. Um, okay, number two, status of Ms. Uh, Professor Jackson's request for reimbursement. Uh, yes, as you're aware. Um, there are indemnity provisions that indemnify you as board members uh, as well as officers of the Council on Aging if uh, you get in, uh, engaged, enthralled in litigation, uh, whether it's civil litigation, whether it's criminal litigation, whether it's administrative litigation, if you get wrapped up in it because of your service on this board, there is a provision in our bylaws, and there is a provision in Title 12 of the revised statutes that allows this board to reimburse the board member or the officer or director for the legal fees incurred. Um, we've done that with Tasha uh, in the regard to the Antoine case, and that we repaid uh, a portion of her legal fees that she spent with Mr. Ernest Johnson. Um, we have a DNO policy, so we submit everything to our DNO policy uh, for review and hopefully approval and payment. There's a $10,000 deductible there in each case. Uh, but they did pay. They, they did finally pay. Ms. Jackson, as you may recall, has a similar indemnification claim because she has been involved also uh, in litigation uh, because of her service on this board. And she's, to her credit, to her lawyer's credit, she's whipped everything that's come her way. Um, hers is a little more complicated than Tasha's. Um, there's several administrative matters, several civil matters, and uh, I've spoken with her and her counsel uh, to, to get me a diagram of, of, of the various particular hearings and proceedings, both administrative and litigation, with cost factors next to each one of them, so that we can submit those to the insurance company for reimbursement. Um, and. As you recall, those don't all have to be final. The Antoine case, for instance, while it is um, not a final judgment, it is on appeal, we did win it. And this board has the authority to pay those fees provisionally in the event, for instance, that the fees that we paid for Tasha and reimbursing her, if we lost the appeal, uh, arguably she might have to pay some of those back. But 
um, based on my advice and, and, and based on your judgment, uh, we decided to pay those provisions. We're going to be looking uh, for uh, some information from Ms. Jackson's attorneys to give us the opportunity to do the same thing. We just need some more clarity on the various causes of actions and various proceedings and amounts associated with each of them. We're going to submit everything that she has to our insurance company. They may pay some, they may pay all, or they may not pay any of it. But we'll be back to you next month with a, an update. I was going to ask you the timeline. So we will, we will have something, some information next month, you said? I think that we'll have, we're likely to have an answer from the insurance company by the end of next month. I don't need your authority to request the information from, or, or request the claim from the insurance company. But in the event that the insurance company doesn't pay or hasn't paid yet, um, I have to come and ask you for authority to reimburse any of those fees that she's expended. Okay. And she has multiple claims in multiple areas, but they were all derivative from the same incident, right? Yeah. I, I spoke with her attorney at length this past week, or one of her attorneys at length this past week, and um, the, the, uh, the picture that he paints, <coughs> all roads lead back to the Council of Aging. Right. That's what I was saying. It, it, same facts, right? Mm -hmm. Each one of the suits were just in different places, but based upon the same facts that she was a board member of the Council on Aging. Yeah, that, 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 is, that is essentially correct. There's, there's issues, <clears throat> there, there are administrative proceedings, there's an ethics proceeding, there's an OVC proceeding, there's a DI proceeding, those are just the administrative ones. And then there are also lawsuits that she has brought, uh, as well as having been brought against her. but. If you accept her attorney's explanation of asking for this in writing, everything leads back to her service on the Council on Aging. Okay. <clears throat> right. That's my report, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Emergency plan? Discussions regarding the emergency plan? Um, every year we have to uh, update our uh, emergency plan. It didn't change from last year. The only thing that changes is point of contacts uh, or staff members uh, information. <coughs> You all have. You all saw the plan uh, at our last meeting. We just need to do a resolution. Uh, Dr. Cole has the resolution saying that we gave you the plan, and the plan has been updated to say 2920. Uh, it's um, and I think Charlotte and Jay are the uh, persons over the emergency plan. Mm -hmm. Board of resolution to adopt this instrument: adoption of the East Baton Rouge Parish Council on Aging Emergency. Preparedness Plan on the 22nd day of April 2019 at a meeting of the Board of Directors of the East Baton Rouge Parish Council on Aging Incorporated, a corporation held in the city of Baton Rouge, state of Louisiana, with a form of the directors present. The following business was conducted. It was duly moved and seconded that the following resolution be adopted. Be it resolved that the Board of Directors of the above named corporation does hereby adopt the EBRCO8 Emergency Preparedness Plan. The above resolution was passed by a majority of those present and voting in accordance with the bylaws and articles of incorporation. I, I certify that the above and foregoing constitutes a true and correct copy of a part of the minutes of a meeting of the Board of Directors held on the 22nd day of April 2019. Do I, mo do I hear a motion to adopt the new or revised emergency preparedness plan? I so move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. All right, you all. Um, we're going to try to go quickly. We're going to go over, um, as you know, we have multiple building projects going on at the same time. I'm turning into a junior contractor here. <laughs> uh, I'm a junior architect and contractor, but uh, Mr. Didier is not here. He's out of town, uh, but he has sent Matthew, his uh, understudy architect and yeah. engineer, and Matthew is going to go through and let you all give you an update briefly on all of our uh, current projects. Come on, Matthew, you can come up here so you be heard on the mic. We'll start with... Um, Let's start with the Fuqua property. And if you want, we have 
Fuqua, 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 uh, <laughs> Fuqua. Um, if you want, we have when you get some time before you leave. We have a lot of maps back here. I've learned how to read. Um, really, they're not like they. Um, yeah, the maps are serious. They have a lot of pages to them, um, and they mean things. So I'll give you a class if you want to see them. It's particularly the drainage map, the underground map, is really interesting. Um, but come on, Matthew, let's go sure. through it. Uh, and they're in your folders. So. I'll start with uh, the Fuquay property. Um, the Fuquay property is um, a site that is currently uh, occupied by a building which we are in the process of bidding to be demolished um, to uh, prep, prep the site for a new construction, the new admin building uh, project. Um, the demolition and abatement project um, is bidding tomorrow. Um, we released an addenda for that project last week, and um, we're expecting to get a good bit of uh, interest from contractors in that project, um, which again is bidding tomorrow. The other side of that, uh, of this property, which is the new admin building, uh, we've been uh, working uh, feverishly on producing a rendering and um, elevations of the new building, showcasing the materiality of the building, the concept of the building, the massing, um, and trying to get a, um, a building that will identify um, the, the new building as a COO, uh, C, uh, I'm sorry, C-A-O, -A -O. <laughs> C-A-O, uh, uh, build, uh, -A -A. building, <laughs> sorry about that. So the second project, uh, which is the Dumas House. So wait, if you all look in your in your pa in your packets, you have one is a um, floor plan of the proposed administrative building. It says uh, new administrative building. And then you also have the selective abatement and demol demolition permits that went out to bid. Um, we had the pre-bid conference and now we're just waiting to see which company bids and at what cost. So who's getting started? Who? Um, no, we're gonna we're, we're gonna knock this building down at Fuquay, and we're gonna build our administration oh, building it. Fifty-seven ninety. That just. Oh yeah, that's where we had. We're gonna have the conf the uh, big conference. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. For the second project, the Dumas House, um, on the addenda, it's the Dumas House parking lot. Uh, this is the paving and drainage repairs project to the Dumas House site. Um, this project is uh, being rebid. Um, the project was bid uh, last month and uh, or earlier this month, and um, the uh, the bids came in a little bit higher than we wanted from uh, the contractors. Twice so, as high. Yeah. So <laughs> so we are going back with uh, we're we're revising our documents um, to make them a little bit clearer for contractors. Um, we believe that. That, uh, there was just a little bit of confusion. Uh, we have various alternates on that project, and we believe that that is uh, part of the, the reason um, for the increased uh, bid numbers that came in. So we are rebidding the project, and uh, I think we are going to advertise or starting to advertise that this week. Mm -hmm. um, so again, 30 days uh, from now, uh, we'll be collecting bids for that project, and hopefully, we'll be on target. You want to explain to me? What the, what the bulk of the project is? Sure. So the project is uh, exterior uh, site paving and drainage. Uh, there is a parking lot um, at the front of the building that uh, has drainage issues. Um, in the slightest rain, it, it begins to uh, sort of flood. So we are ripping up the existing paving and putting in new subsurface drainage. Um, we're putting in um, several safety factors uh, into the design um, to to help uh, retain water and also to get it off of the site. Um, and when I say retain, I mean retain subsurface, not at grade level. Um, so it does not cause a problem anymore. And all of the paving is essentially being put back in kind, so you're not losing any parking or uh, site walks, sidewalks, anything like that. Uh, all of the work is being done, again, subsurface. Okay. 
un that's a fancy term for under the ground. Y yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Homewood, we are still um, waiting on energy. Come to, we were donated the Homewood property. Part of the property that we were donated does not belong to us or the people or who the who donated or, it to us. or who donated it to us. The Homewood, uh, a Homewood Neighborhood Association donated us property. But partly is Entergy's property, so we wrote a letter to Entergy asking them, since we are we've been using it for 40 years, could they go ahead and give us uh, the the part that um, we've taken ownership of? If not, we have to ask Murphy to give us some squatters rights, I guess. I don't know, because part of our building and swimming pool is on the property, right? And so we can't start any kind of um, project until we get all of this cleared up. So uh, my good friend, Mr. Will Johnson uh, at Entergy has taken our letter and we sent it up to to the top tier of Entergy and we're just waiting to see. Top if high school graduate, I might add. Yes, and we're just waiting to see if, uh, if they'll go ahead and don't Donate us, don't us, donate us the property and release uh, the property so we can get started on um, the renovation at Homewood because Homewood is beyond um, fire marshal capacity and I cannot accept any more seniors. Um, and we're starting to have a waiting list of seniors that want to join the Homewood Senior Center. And I'm having that all, at all of my centers actually, so it's a good, bad problem to have. Um, we already discussed 1701, so we won't rediscuss that. And I think that's it. Okay, that's it. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, the intergenerational uh, center, which is the fire station on Gus Young, we uh, finally got a uh, clear title of it. That's right. We own it. Uh, program, and because it's an RDA property, they give us 18 months. Um, to get it back into commerce after they let it sit there for 10 years, but that's another story. <laughs> so we are in the- They're actually a pass through. They're not giving you anything. They're not giving us anything. That's be right. Clear. Let's be clear. So we are in the process of uh, vetting uh, architects to do the project um, and, and setting up an agreement to do the project and see how much that's going to cost, because we are going to be utilizing our own funds to bring this project, this property back into commerce. So we look forward to moving expeditiously on the fire station. Um, we've already gated it, secured it. Um, we put a sign and let them, the neighborhood know that it's coming in. It's our hope that it will be the spark that the community needs to, you know, to, to turn around. It'll be a beacon uh, for that community. Then we have been Lotus Housing. So we are, we are getting in the housing business, adding to our housing footprint. Um, Louisiana Housing uh, Alliance uh, <coughs> Finance, um, they just released some tax credits. We have a signed a partnership with Gulf Coast Housing, Ms. Kathy Laborde, I don't know if you all know her, that we're going to do some, uh, some senior housing together, particularly in the area. We're going to do our Lotus Village. Remember, we've been talking about the village for some time in the area right around uh, our admin building. All that land is vacant and empty. Um, and the owners uh, who own the building also owns that land. And, and so we're in communication with him about maybe acquiring some of the land and doing some housing and using some tax credit dollars, um, some federal home loan bank funds um, to, to get this, this money. So we have been working. We signed a uh, joint MOU with her. We'll do the project together, split development costs 50-50, and then we'll become the owner of the property. Yes, ma'am. That's what I, I, you said it. We'll become the owner of the property. And yes. Sure that we have management fees. Management fees are ours. In that um, project, please. Yes, ma'am. That we would be able to sustain ourselves just in case anybody having mm -hmm. any ideas about canceling our taxes. That's right. Eight years. Ago. Well, you know our good 
$150,000 a day attorney, <laughs> make sure all that was, was right <laughs> in the MOU. <laughs> okay, and uh, in, in that same vein, we have a housing master plan being developed uh, for the agency so that um, we can ex expand our footprint but do it, you know, correctly. And we are 15 years into our 20 years of our Dumas House um, HUD uh, 202 project, and it, in a little while that's going to belong to us. And so we're going to get a, a, a master plan on how our housing is going to look for the next 10, 20, 30 years and how we're going to develop senior housing and senior programs and projects for the seniors in this parish um, for the next 30 to 50 years. Yes, ma'am. I can say because I went to the conference, there was a lot of information That's right. on how we can do that and how to uh, acquire funding mm -hmm. uh, from HUD in order to, That's to, right. to make sure that we take care of our seniors. And one of the things that was most interesting to me was the homeless seniors mm -hmm. and the number of homeless seniors that we actually have. And I'd be interested in knowing what that number is in EBR. Uh, but that was really uh, informative. And I want to thank uh, Tasha Agmar for being a co-chair of that um, aging conference. Aging in America. And, yep. and, and it, was, it was actually uh, very good for me to be there. So mm -hmm. if, if they have something similar, I would strongly encourage some of the other board members to go because there's a lot of things that you don't know about the mm -hmm. Asian population right. that we learn. Right. And so thank you so much. I thank you. Sure. I give it up for our... <laughs> thank you. Thank you. They worked out. I found this lady. I was, <laughs> I, thought, I wasn't taking the dinner. She was like, we're in a class. We're in a class. She wasn't having fun, y'all. She was sure wouldn't. So again, thank sure you for that. There's a lot of information that they gave us on housing, and I look forward to uh, doing that, right. that, uh, that footprint here in EBR. That's right. So the, in that same vein, the three we're looking at three areas to start with, uh, with Gulf Coast Housing, who's also a nonprofit. Um, we're looking at uh, some property in Baker because they have some rural development funds that just came out. So she's quickly looking at some acres in, in Baker. And, and then some North Baton Rouge property, we're looking at the Weller, the old Weller Avenue Baptist Church um, that's vacant. So we're looking at turning that into some housing and some assisted living um, for seniors. And then of course, the, the remainder of the Riddick property that's around us, because it doesn't make sense. The city gonna put $3 million in the building and we're gonna put $5 million, two blocks, back from them and then we're going to look at desolation and uh, and blight. So we need, if we're going to be in the neighborhood, then we need to be the spark that brings the neighborhood back um, back to life. And so uh, that is my report. Oh, yes, we did go to the conference um, and we went in a big contingency. It was about um, I think I took 22 people to the conference um, and I was in oh, okay, I forgot about this. I was in the, the leadership trick. Chantel and I took the, uh, the leadership uh, Institute program that's designed for leaders in Asian by uh, Harvard University. And I thought I was going to go in there and skate, you know, and <laughs> talk and wave, but they kept us in class from 8.30 to 4.30. They checked roll, and we had to do 15-minute assignments. And But it was really, really, it was really an eye-opening experience. And uh, we came out with certificates from Harvard that we can glue to the wall. You know, I went to Harvard, not Murphy, so, you know. <laughs> uh, so I called my mother. I said, look, I went to Harvard, so don't call me and tell me nothing this morning. She said, but you will never be smarter than me. <laughs> anyway, so it was great, and my care, uh, my staff, my care managers learned a lot. I got a lot of, um, of young people that came back and very interested in gerontology and how we, we move our community forward in aging, because our community is aging, right? And Because uh, a lot of the young people are moving away, but the, we, we always have the seniors. And so they taught us how to uh, focus on them and and some great things so I, I appreciate you all letting us go um, and we had a good time and we learned a lot yep. um, lastly Madam Chair, that's my report. This is going to be in other business. Okay. Let's move on to other business then. Other business. So I got an email while I was gone from the Governor's Office of Elderly Affairs requesting that you all do financial disclosures because you never did them. But then I got an email 
this weekend saying, wait, you might not have to do it because we quasi-governmental, you shouldn't have to do it. And this is a letter from their the governor's office's um, counsel saying, don't do the financial disclosure. They sent a letter to ethics clarifying uh, positions about Council on Aging board members, and then they're going to wait to get something in writing. So don't go online and do your um, financial disclosures. What you do have to do is that one hour uh, ethics training. training. And if you have done it, send me your certificate so I can send it into Governor's Office of Elderly Affairs. But don't they don't want you to fill out the disclosure. And so I put the letter. I have. Yeah, it should be in your packet. I, we have yours. We have yours. If we, I don't know if we have everybody's. I did the disclosure too. You did? Well, yeah. You were supposed to. Yeah, they don't want you to do it. So if you look in the, the governor's office sent this, if you look in your in your packet, it's in there. Um, and Because I think a lot of the board members across the, the state are uh, not liking that. So we'll wait to see. Okay? Okay. Well, I have other business. Okay. Um, and so we're coming to the end of my term as the chair. That's and I it. just wanted to personally thank the board members for being so supportive of me yes. for helping me this was a new experience for me yeah. and I really appreciate the support and everything that y'all have done to help me learn about this process and for us to jump some significant hurdles that we had That's over the right. past two years right. and then I also wanted to thank Tasha and her staff thank you because I really could not have done it without y'all mm -hmm. You've been very helpful and very informative, and I appreciate y'all and everything that you've done. Thank you so much. Okay. And, and just because you're not the chair doesn't mean you're leaving. Oh, I ain't going anywhere. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So Second? Second. Now, Anybody against the journey? <laughs> okay. May 15th, annual meeting. That's May 15th nice. is yeah. the last uh, meeting. Um, I will call, I probably will, will call an ad hoc building committee meeting just so we can go over if we finalize some prices on some of this property. But May 15th is the annual meeting. You have to be here. You cannot miss. It's at 4 o'clock and it's not going to be here. It's going to be at the Crown Plaza because we are too big for here now. We can't do anything in here anymore um, so it's at the Crown Plaza at 4 right at 4 o'clock and don't forget so that's when the membership reaffirms you the seniors vote for you again and then um, and then after that we have election of new officers uh, all the officer seats are up uh, I think everybody's completed their two years and so we'll have election of new officers okay